Hello, dolls. Welcome back to another Thriving Thursday live stream. Hello, hello. Today, as you can tell by the title, we are talking about Juneteenth. So it's going to be like, you know, informative. And I'm just going to share some things with you about how you can celebrate Juneteenth. And then I'm also going to talk about why you should support Black business for Juneteenth. I mean, period. But, you know, we're talking about Juneteenth. So if that interests you, make sure you stay tuned. If you are catching the replay, then go ahead and skip ahead to about the five minute mark, because that's when I'm going to get started. I'm just going to run through announcements really quick, and then we're going to dive into the topic. So first and foremost, if you are not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. If you've watched any videos of mine before, or even if this is your first one, you're like, okay, yeah, like I'm, I'm loving the vibe. And loving the energy, I want to support them. Please consider subscribing. It is free for you and it helps me a ton. Majority of you guys watch my videos, you watch a good chunk of it, you share it and all that, but you're not subscribed. So please consider subscribing because I know sometimes as a viewer, if you're not in the YouTube niche or industry, you could just kind of be watching and not realize um, subscribing really makes a difference. So please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and to leave a comment down below. All of those things help and it's free for you and it helps me a ton it's free to show love also if you are ready to take your support up a notch maybe you already are subscribed maybe you already share you already like you already comment you already do all the things then consider becoming a channel member if you just want to support me on a general basis for 6.99 a month you can become a channel member and that helps me keep bringing candid and transparent and educational and informative and entertaining videos to you guys, okay? Because making content takes a lot of work. Even going live, it still takes time, you know, to bring guests on the channel, takes time, takes organization, takes, you know, brainstorming and all these things. So consider becoming a channel member. Also, you can always check the description box to donate to the, the Daily Dell brand um, through Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, or Zelle. Anytime you feel free um, or you feel led to do so, feel free to do that. Also, if you you are an aspiring creative. Maybe you are someone who's like, I need to get me some extra money out here, okay? Because I'm feeling the squeeze right now. Groceries going up, gas going up, rent going up, everything's going up but your pockets. And you're like, okay, I need someone to just help me like cohesively come up with a quick action plan of how I can like turn these talents, turn these skill sets and this knowledge into money into a side hustle or maybe even eventually a lucrative business, then go ahead and look down below and book a creative consultation call with me because that is going to be what you want to do. Okay. Like that's where I sit with you. You brain dump on me, or maybe you already started something and it's not really giving you the money that you wanted to give. Then I sit with you and I come up, come up with a cohesive plan to help you get that, those coins up. Like when you leave the call, you've got a plan, you've got insight. We're not just going to sit around and shoot the breeze. Hey, Michelle, glad that you're here, sis. Um, also, join the newsletter. It goes out on the on the first and fifteenth of every month. Um, sometimes I send out more emails per month. It just depends, but at least the first and fifteenth, you will get information from me. It's like a private conversation. I share more in depth about business, faith, and or life. You know, whatever I feel led to share. I'm gonna start um, hosting events in the near future. And, you know, just giving you discounts on different things and access, like, you know, preliminary access to things and whatnot. So you want to be a part of the newsletter because that is where all the exclusives and everything, VIP treatment is going to come down the road as we grow and we start doing more events and things like that. Because I am really building a community here. It's not just going to be a YouTube channel. It really is turning into a community. So click down below, join the newsletter. And last but not least, of course, like I said, share this out with some of your friends and all of that jazz. So that's pretty much all that I can think about right now. We are going to get started in about one minute. So I hope you guys are having a good day. I hope everything's well. Today we are talking about Juneteenth because it's around the corner, you know, and it's an official federal holiday. So I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and cover some bases on this. Let's go ahead and have some discussions and things like that because yeah, like we don't we don't want to be ignorant to the holiday. And some of us know more than others. You know, for me, I am first generation American, so I didn't grow up celebrating Juneteenth because my parents didn't know about it. But you know, as I learned about it, my family learned about it. You know, we try to celebrate these things and commemorate because we're big history buffs. You know, we just love to honor those who came before us and things like that, any chance that we get. So we try to celebrate it the best we can. But we're going to dive in today, like I said, into just some fun facts and some traditions around Juneteenth and, you know, ways you can celebrate. And then we're going to finish off with why you should support Black-owned business. So 
we just gonna go ahead and dive right on in. Don't forget to like and share this out as well as you're watching, whether you're live or on the replay. But what is Juneteenth? Maybe you're watching this and you're like, okay, what in the world is Juneteenth? Like I've heard people say it, not quite sure what it is, whatever. So Juneteenth is a holiday celebrated on June 19th to commemorate the emancipation of enslaved people in the US. So the holiday was first celebrated in Texas where on that date in Texas in on June 19th, 1865, in the aftermath of the Civil War, there were slaves that were, they were technically free. They were already declared free years prior in the 1862 Emancipation Proclamation, but they didn't know they were free. So they were still under enslavement for three years and had nobody, you know, told them, Lord knows how long they would have remained enslaved. So, you know, they were um, still operating as slaves, still had masters, still were proper, seen as property. And so eventually, you know, they were informed that they were free. And that is why Juneteenth became a holiday. So it was celebrated um, for many decades. You know, a lot of uh, Black Americans were celebrating it on a more minute scale, but it became an official federal holiday in 2021, I believe. That's when Joe Biden signed it into um, being a federal holiday. So now it's a national holiday. And the reason why I wanted to do this video too is because even though it's a federal holiday, which is great, like I'm glad that finally it's getting the, the national recognition that it deserves, it has the potential more so now than ever to start being appropriated, to start being overly commercialized and to lose its true meaning. So because with holidays, stores are always going to try to capitalize on things and whatnot. And so that's all that. Okay, let me do a video just to encourage. And that's why I incorporated why you should support black owned business, which we're going to get to. So what are some facts and common traditions around Juneteenth? Okay. Now I will say there aren't a lot of traditions per se. It's not like, you know, Thanksgiving, you know, every year you get the turkey and you know, the historic cornucopia or Christmas, you know, where you have the tree and the presents. And if you want to teach your kids about Santa Claus or whatever, like how you have that. I personally don't do the Santa Claus thing with Christian. He knows mom got them gifts. So, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, those holidays have like more clear cut traditions. Juneteenth is pretty much ripe for the taking as far as traditions go. Like you and your family can determine what traditions you want to set in place, which I think is really cool. It's really fun. Like it gives you a chance to figure out like how you want to particularly celebrate it. But there are some things that are gen generally associated with the holiday, historically speaking. So for one, red foods and drinks are very common for Juneteenth. So eating red colored foods, drinking red colored drinks, that's very common. The official drink for Juneteenth is red hibiscus sweet tea. Um, so in the Caribbean, we have hibiscus tea, but we call it sorrel. So, you know, whatever you can get your hands on that's similar to that, you can make it yourself, or I'm sure you could go to black owned restaurants or whatever, and they're selling it or any restaurant really. Well, let me not say any restaurant, but a lot of restaurants, particularly in the South, I'm sure you can find something like it, or you could try to make it yourself at home because they do sell. I know they sell sorrel in the store. They sell it at Walmart. And then of course, Caribbean markets and stuff too. Now the hibiscus tea, that's a different story, but there are recipes and stuff. See, this is why you need to be a part of my newsletter too, because I shared a ton of recipes in my newsletter. Like literally, I shared a ton of recipes in the newsletter. You just got to click the names of the food and it takes you to recipe pages. And I shared a lot more in depth. So this is why you got to join the newsletter, okay? Link in the description box down below. Because I really try to give y'all like a little bit more than I give you here or anywhere else for that matter. A popular dessert for, um, well, I guess you could call these the official desserts, quote unquote, but they're not really listed as the official desserts, but they're very popular to eat. On Juneteenth are red velvet cake and strawberry rhubarb pie. I think that's how you say the name, rhubarb, rhubarb pie. So um, very yummy. You know, again, we're sticking with the red theme. And then popular entrees or food items, side dishes or whatever, are tomato watermelon salad, so if you don't like tomatoes or watermelon, you're probably not going to want to make that um, cranberry cornbread and red beans and rice, you know, so those are very popular things associated. Um, other popular foods include um, like barbecue foods include beef brisket, hot links, you know, the encased sausages, um, chicken, ribs. Hey, Tara, I haven't seen you in a minute, sis. I hope you're doing good. Love you too, sis. And I miss you. We've got to catch up. It's been too long, but I hope you are doing well. Um, chicken ribs, beef brisket, hot links, you know, pork, you know, the typical barbecue foods, typical things that you would see at a barbecue or a cookout. 
are your um, Juneteenth cookout foods and also foods associated in the black community with prosperity and um, like good fortune. So corn, collard greens, black eyed peas. Um, there's like a whole slew of stuff that people incorporate. I think sweet potatoes are in there too. It's a, it's a couple of different things, but these are foods. Those that I just listed are foods generally associated with good fortune and wealth and stuff in the black community. Cause like, I, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but like on new year's Eve in the black community and in the Caribbean too, or at least in Guyana, I can't speak for other Caribbean countries, but I know in Guyana and in the black community it's very common to eat black eyed peas on New Year's Eve to bring in the new year. Like if you don't have your black eyed peas, it's just kind of like, oh no, like we didn't we didn't make the black eyed peas, like what's going on? So, you know, those are known um historically to just be associated with good fortune. So if you want to get that prosperity in life and stuff, those are the foods that they would eat. So um the red symbolizes perseverance and honors the blood that was shed from black people, or our black ancestors. So the color red being associated with Juneteenth also over the years came to symbolize, you know, like um, it came to symbolize like power, sacrifice, transitioning, also representing the, the African and Caribbean ancestry of the slaves that came through Texas, because Texas was like at the end of like the Confederacy, like that was one of the I don't want to. I don't want to necessarily say the last states to get slaves, but we definitely know it was one of the last states to let them free. Okay, so it definitely was one of the last. Um, you just named all of my first loves. Oh, <laughs> those, those are your favorite foods. That's hilarious. But yeah, I you know I don't play with the food in the newsletter when I put out these recipes and stuff. Um, I was like, yeah, food makes or breaks an occasion for me. If the food ain't right, I'm just like, yeah, that just kind of killed all the festivities for me personally. So the red is very significant. Also, the um, the the official Juneteenth flag, which at some point I'm going to get like pop up pictures here and make my presentations a lot fancier and stuff. Just bear with me. But you can Google this. But the official flag for Juneteenth is red, white and blue, just like the American flag, because it's to symbolize that. Black people have are just as American as anybody else in this country and have been in this country since the start, basically, you know. And in the center of the flag is a star with like a zigzag around it, kind of looking like it's bursting out. And that's to represent like, um, I think astronomers say that that kind of star or zigzag or whatever represents like a star that just appeared, like came from pretty much least expected star like you didn't expect to see a type of thing or something like that i share the details in my newsletter but yeah so that's the official flag however a lot of times when it comes to juneteenth you'll see the pan-african colors associated with it which are black red and green so um either one you know you'll see around the holiday i personally have noticed more people wearing and utilizing the pan-african colors than the red white and blue um because Juneteenth is also known as Black Independence Day and stuff as well. But just know that the official Juneteenth flag has the red, white, and blue colors and the star with the zigzag around it. So that's the official flag. Now, a fun fact that I found out when I was researching Juneteenth is that watch night service actually dates back to Juneteenth. So if you grew up in the Black church, like I did for a greater part of my life, um, you know, watch night service is very common, <laughs> very common New Year's Eve. And that is a practice that we still do to this day. It dates back to Juneteenth, like I said. And the first watch night service that was recorded or that's known to have occurred, occurred on December 31st, 1862. And um, that was during the Civil War and free Blacks and Blacks that were still enslaved that were living in the Union States gathered at churches and, uh, and or other safe spaces to, um, and they knelt and prayed on plantations and other slaveholding sites in America, awaiting basically the news of the Emancipation Proclamation. So they actually were awaiting to see when it became law. And that's also known as Freedom's Eve. So that tradition of like staying up and crossing over into the new like morning dates back as far as we know to Juneteenth. So by the way, I love your mom's cooking, her channel, her personality, looking forward to her Juneteenth dinner. Thank you so much, sis. Yes, I am definitely looking forward to her popping back up. We're going to try our best to tape a Juneteenth dinner because she did take a hiatus because of her health. So we're going to try our best. If we don't get a Juneteenth dinner, we're going to cook the foods 
after Juneteenth and then tape it. I mean, yeah, cook it after Juneteenth, tape it, and then put it back up. So we might be late for this year, but we're going to be right on time for next year and just any time of year, really, because, I mean, the foods, you can cook it any time, really. Anytime you feel like having some good old soul food or whatever, because typically, like, that's one thing I will say. There's not, like, a solid, like, standard menu for Juneteenth besides the, like I said, the official drink being the red hibiscus sweet tea. And the common dessert being red velvet cake. But other than that, it's like, even if you can't get to, let's say, the cranberry cornbread or, you know, whatever, or you don't want to have a cookout or a barbecue, like any type of food that's associated with soul food, Cajun or Creole food, or honestly, just food associated, generally speaking, with the Black community, you're good to go. Like people eat chicken and waffles, you know, people will make like mac and cheese and some fried chicken, you know, <laughs> so whatever, you know, floats your boat that is, you would think like when you think of soul food, that's the best way to put it, soul food or like Cajun or Creole food, you're good to go with that. So just wanted to put that out there just in case you're like, dang, like I don't want to eat tomato and watermelon salad. Like, you know, <laughs> you don't you don't have to make it. I was just naming stuff that's like historically known. And the other fun fact I found out real quick about the food before I keep, um, you know, going on to the rest of the notes and stuff is that red foods are associated with Juneteenth a lot too, because back when Juneteenth happened, a lot of the foods didn't have color in it. Like a lot of the foods were like white or, you know, black like you know your black beans or bean or peas or whatever like it just was very bland you didn't have very colorful foods and so you know having red food back then was like celebratory it was like wow like okay you know we dyed the food a certain color which was red and of course the red has a significance of like i said power transition and so on and so forth but it was also a festive thing too where it was like wow like we get to have this colorful food you know we're not eating the same old bland stuff over and over um whether it's bland and in taste and or color. So I thought that that was a fun fact. But yeah, so watch night service dates back to Juneteenth, December 31st, 1862. Uh, freed Blacks and like I said, enslaved Blacks around the Union States gathered and knelt and prayed waiting um, for the news of the Emancipation Proclamation. So it's very cool to see that that tradition has stuck. Because I remember growing up, like every New Year's Eve, we had watch night service, like without fail without fail. And I mean, I even have it really in a way on my channel, like every, every New Year's Eve for the past several years, I've been doing my New Year's Eve live. So even though it's not like in a church or whatever, it follows that same format where we're going to cross over together, like we're crossing over into a new beginning together. But nevertheless, Juneteenth is a great holiday, like I had mentioned earlier, to develop your own tra traditions, sorry, and commemorate the day and honor it in the way that you see fit or, you know, honoring the heritage in the way that you see fit. So I do want to share with you guys some ways you can celebrate and develop your own traditions. And then we're going to dive into why you should support Black-owned business. So first and foremost, one of the most obvious ones is you can host a barbecue, a cookout, you know, and you can speak and reflect on the day with guests. You can share some facts with them. Um, you know, if there's anybody there who maybe knows of their ancestral history and maybe they have some sort of tie to the day or something, they can share that. Like you can just make it like a fun historical kind of cookout or barbecue. So that's one way. Another way is you can go to a local African-American history museum in your city. So this is one of those times where I really miss being in D.C. because the Smithsonian's in D.C. are all free and whatever museum is not under the Smithsonian branch typically is pretty affordable. Like D.C., the hardest part about getting, I mean, vacation there is getting there. Once you're there, they have a lot of free and like really, really cheap stuff to do. So you just don't see that in abundance down here like that. And it's kind of like it'd be costing to do stuff. But, um, you know, D.C., the African-American Museum, or the official name is the National Museum of African-American History and Culture, um, and, and MAC, basically. <laughs> it is amazing. It is eight floors of African-American history, culture, everything. It is so beautiful, the architecture of it. I've had the pleasure. Hey, Layla. Oh, happy birthday. I forgot you said today is your birthday. See, I wish you were in America because I remember that... Canada doesn't have cash app. I wanted you to put your cash tag on here and people donate to you. But 
man, that sucks. Canada got to do better. They got to get, they got to get cash out, but happy birthday. I pray that this next year is abundantly blessed for you. I hope that you had some fun today. You ate a piece of cake. See, I had a piece of cake today. I feel good. That was an honor of you and spirit. <laughs> I was eating for you and spirit, but um, I hope you had fun today. I hope this next year is abundantly blessed and amazing for you and all of the things, many blessings, long life, all of that. So I definitely am wishing you a very happy birthday. Um, Y'all wish Layla a happy birthday on the replay and in the chat and the comments and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, so the African American Museum in DC, very, very beautiful, eight floors of um, African American history, culture, all of that good stuff. And it is intense. It is intriguing. It is in, like very, very intricate. Like they did a really good job of making that museum. I've had the honor of going, let's see, I went once when Christian was like still in a stroller, like he couldn't even walk yet. And then I went back with my best friend at the time and her kids. And I feel like I went one more time. I went at least three times. I might've been four, but every time I went, I saw something different. Cause it's hard to get through it in one day. It's a lot of stuff in there. They've got like two different cafes, I think, or something. And they serve food from the black community from around the world. So you have your soul food, you have your black Caribbean food, black African food, you have, um, you know, I think they even might have some European dishes or something. Like they have so much in there. That's the one thing I didn't get to do with eating the cafe. But when I go back to DC, hopefully I can go there and go back um, and eat at the cafe. So, cause I, I remember the first time I went, you had to get tickets. Like the first year they opened, you had to get tickets because they wanted to monitor the influx of people. And it was like fighting for your life to get a ticket. Like literally I had two laptops open. My sister had two computers open and we were like, okay, the tickets just went out. Come on, let's go, let's go. Like putting your information, you got like, it was like, you know, you had to hustle to get those tickets. And then after that, they lessened, I think the, the tightness or like the restriction of the, the tickets. And then they just got rid of the tickets altogether. At least when I was still up there, I don't know how they're doing it now because of everything with the pandemic, they might be right back to the tickets. I don't know. But either way, if you're ever in the DMV, go check out the African-American Museum in DC. Also, there's the Great Blacks and Wax Museum in Baltimore. There's, I think there's a couple of black um, history museums in the Richmond area. There's just a lot to do. So find ev almost every city I've been to, even on vacations, has an African-American history museum. Like, I'm one of those people that when we're on vacation, we're going to have fun. We're going to go to the beach. We're going to shop or whatever, but we're going to get some history and some education in too. So every time, because growing up, my nephews always used to travel with us. And even now, I mean, if they were closer to us, they would still vacation with us, but they already know they could vouch for this. Like if you vacationing with Auntie Rondell, Auntie Rochelle and grandma, you're going to get something educational in there. Okay. Like you're going to learn today. You're going to learn something today. So even when I'm on vacation, I find something around African-American history to do, whether it's a museum or whatever. Another thing you could do is attend a Juneteenth festival, festival or celebration in your city. So I know, like I said, in the newsletter, again, link in the description box, join the newsletter, y'all. Um, Atlanta has a couple of celebrations. So on Sunday after church, I'm going with my family to something that the Atlanta History Museum is, I think it's the Atlanta History Museum. It's one of them. But they're hosting a festival downtown from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So we're going to catch the second half of it. And then there was a Juneteenth festival that I had seen that's going on on Saturday, I think. And there's a few other ones. So I know Atlanta got quite a few going on. Texas is going to have a ton, you know, especially that Galveston area, Houston, all that. Like, they have a lot going on just from when I put in a simple Google search because, you know, that's the home base of where Juneteenth took place. So they have all types of stuff. I mean, blues festivals, Juneteenth music festivals, reenactments, whatever. That's my other thing. Go to a Juneteenth reenactment in your area. So like I said, I know Texas has them. Maybe your state might have it. I don't know. But reenactments are fun to um, go and see. I've been to a few. So, you know, that's something that you can go check out. Thank you so much, Rondell. I'm going to eat some cake soon, breaking my diet, period. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like eating cake today when I was at Publix earlier, which is a grocery store here. And I was like, I'm going to get me a piece of cake because I'm, I'm fasting, like I'm intermittent fasting right now. But, you know, within that, my time to eat, I was like, I really want some cake. So I celebrated with you, sis. <laughs> Another thing that you could do is attend a Juneteenth Blues or Music Festival. So, um, again, just Google your area, see, like, bigger cities are probably going to have more going on than smaller cities. But there should be something going on. 
um, longer term ways to celebrate and commemorate Juneteenth because at the end of the day, it really is about like um, celebrating what where where we're headed as a community, or, you know, the progress that we've made or whatever. Even though we still got a lot more work to do, okay? Because we be we be doing the most sometimes. Like we and we we have a lot of things up against us, but you know, we've made progress. So it's celebrating the progress, and it's also commemorating our ancestral history or whatever the case may be. And so, you know, longer ways that you can commemorate and just show support is invest, whether that's time or money in organizations and groups dedicated to providing equity and equality for the black community, you know, in various ways, it doesn't have to be one thing. So a couple that I jotted down is the National Urban League um, that helps with education. Third Good Marshall College Fund, also an educational based one. Black Owned Everything, that's a site where you can buy a variety of products from Black owned businesses around the country. Um, it might even, no, I think it's just in the US. I think it's just based in the US. But either way, you can buy a variety of products from Black owned businesses, from clothes to hair products to, you know, um, house cleaning products. I mean, like literally the list goes on and on. And in the June 1st newsletter, I shared a couple of websites. I think I shared five or six altogether that are Black owned business directory. So you go on it and they connect you with Black owned businesses. Some even connect you with Black owned services. So if you want a therapist, a coach, a consultant, whatever. But um, that was in a newsletter. Also, Eat Okra. Eat Okra is an interesting site because that helps you find Black-owned eateries across the U.S. So restaurants, cafes, et cetera, et cetera, even grocery store brands and stuff. So check out Eat Okra, like the food, Eat Okra. Another one is the Equal Justice Initiative, which works to end mass incarceration, excessive punishment, and racial inequality. So these are all just organizations that you can support on an ongoing basis, whether, like I said, it's, you know, donating to them if they accept monetary donations, which majority of them should, or buying from the businesses listed on them, like, you know, the Black Owned Everything site, or even investing time, you know, if they have a need for volunteers or, you know, for people to just um, do the heavy lifting or do some sort of work involved with the organization, like, you know, keep an eye on that, whatever piques your interest, whatever you feel like a leaning towards, you know, see how you can help out and things like that. So last but not least, why should you support Black owned businesses for Juneteenth? So Juneteenth is a time to honor Black people who were enslaved when they should have been free. You know, one of the best intangible ways to honor that is to support the community that descends from those people. So, you know, this is not a time, like I had mentioned earlier, that you want to see Juneteenth become appropriated, become commercialized. Like I said on Tuesdays Live, I think we're not about to Cinco de Mayo Juneteenth. You know, we're not about to just enjoy whatever we can get from the holiday, <clears throat> wear a bunch of dashigis or what have you, and then keep it moving. Like it's a time to really sit and focus and think like, okay, how can I really support black owned businesses? How can I really support the black community? And one of the best ways to do that is through black owned businesses. Because at the end of the day, spending your money with black owned businesses supports the black community in several ways, by providing income, increasing, you know, net worth, helping to create jobs, so on and so forth. Like it really does create lasting effects. And supporting black businesses also helps to protect against appropriation and economic inequality surrounding Juneteenth. So you know, like I said, the mass commercialized commercialization of holidays really waters down the meaning. So when Juneteenth, well, not even Juneteenth, when June first started this year, I saw some Facebook debates about like an ice cream flavor that Walmart had come up with, um, with like the Juneteenth colors, the, well, the Pan-African flag colors. And funny thing is like one or two days before I saw all the Facebook um, hullabaloo <laughs> about Juneteenth. I was in Walmart and I saw the ice cream and I was like, they have a Juneteenth ice cream. I wasn't about to buy it anyway, because I don't really try to keep too much of, you know, that kind of stuff in the house, just like that, because Christian will eat it out. And then we don't need to be eating a bunch of ice cream and stuff either. So I saw it and I was just kind of like, Hmm, that's interesting. I can't remember what the flavor was, but I remember seeing it. And so Hello, Mimi. Hello, hello. I'm glad you're here. 
just popped in. And welcome if this is your first time. I can't remember if it is or not. And my bad if it isn't, and I forgot. But um, just popped in to agree. We should definitely support Black businesses. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you for joining and just popping in really quick. I appreciate it. But um, I can't remember what flavor the ice cream was. But I just remember looking at it, and I was like, okay, yeah, that's interesting. And I kept it moving. I think Christian was even with me that day. So that could be another reason why I didn't even go to look at it, because he's just going to see ice cream and be like, I want it, I want it. And so then I come home, and the next day or like two days later, like I said, I saw the art arguments about people talking about, you know, how companies are already trying to get their foot in the door towards getting majority of the profit margin from Juneteenth and really like positioning themselves to appropriate the holiday. I mean, look at Cinco de Mayo, like Mexicans don't even celebrate Cinco de Mayo like that. Like it's not even a big deal for them. Like it is for us. And the crazy part about it is like, <laughs> like the same people, not even all of them, I'm not going to say everybody that celebrates Cinco de Mayo, but a lot of the same people that celebrate Cinco de Mayo be the same ones that don't want the people associated with that culture in this country. But that's another conversation for another day, you know? <laughs> so it's just like, that's what we're not going to do, you know, because now it's just become a, a holiday where people just go, they turn up, they eat tacos, wear some burros and ponchos and drink a bunch of liquor. And it's like, okay, but what is the meaning of the, like, I don't even know the meaning of Cinco de Mayo. I really don't know. And I should research that. Like at this in this day and age, there's really no excuse to be ignorant. But I'm just saying like, as much as people celebrate it, because I don't celebrate it. I'm out working, if anything. I'm out trying to get a coin, but I'm not like in the bars turning up and all that. Like I ain't got time for all that. So, you know, <laughs> for me, I don't celebrate it, but I literally see the crowd. Like it is impossible to go anywhere that serves a semblance of Mexican food. And I say that with air quotes because even the way we make Mexican food in the States isn't authentic Mexican food. But again, another topic for another day, it's more so Tex-Mex. But anywhere that serves a taco, a chimichanga, a burrito, or a taco bowl, or Lord knows what else, you can't even get your meal quickly, even down to Del Taco or Taco Bell. I mean, you literally are just like in line forever. And so it's like, it's lost its meaning. And that's the same thing that I don't want to see happen with Juneteenth. You know, I don't want it to become a day, like I stated earlier, where everyone rushes out to buy a dashiki or some African print something. And then they rush to the nearest, you know, KFC or Popeye's to get their two piece and a biscuit and maybe a slice of watermelon from the local grocery store. And that's that, like, I don't want that to happen. I really don't want that to happen. And so in order for it to remain somewhat, um, you know, at least honoring the community, I really do feel like Black businesses need to be supported. I'm not saying that, you know, it's wrong to eat a, a slice of watermelon on the day or heck, if you want a piece of fried chicken, eat you a piece of fried chicken. But I'm just saying it shouldn't just be a day where like big corporations like Walmart and all these big other companies, Target or whoever, no matter which store you like, it shouldn't just profit off of it. Because at the end of the day, what are they really doing for the Black community at large? You know, obviously not much. Because when you look at the numbers, um, Black businesses only generate about 15% of the national average revenue margin. margin I can't even speak. Marvin, revenue margin <laughs> of non-Black businesses nationwide. So same thing with St. Patrick's Day. Right. It's an excuse for everyone to get drunk, but nobody, but the Irish people know the true meaning. Exactly. So it's just like, what are we really doing here? Like, and that's the problem. It becomes a big money-making thing. And the people that are, should benefit from it, because as we know, Black people in the U.S. always get the short end of the stick. They always get the last nine times out of 10. Like, we got to fight tooth and nail to really get anything. And so, you know, it, it, it's not even going to take as long to get as far gone. Like, in another year or two, you and find it being completely just like out of whack. And so, you know, there has to be some sort of like, I don't want to say monitoring, but a healthy sense of gatekeeping to make sure that the community can benefit off of it. You know, because like I said, like black businesses only generate 15% of the national revenue margin of non-black businesses nationwide. So we generate 15% of what they generate on a yearly basis. Couple that with wealth disparities in the US amongst black families compared to white families. That's a whole nother conversation because black families, their wealth is 10 times less than white families in the US. Then black businesses typically have a lack of funding capital. There's a lack of business longevity and growth. One, because a lot of us don't, and I put myself in there because even though I'm self-employed, I am transitioning to mostly being an entrepreneur, you know? And so a lot of us don't 
know where to go to get funding. We don't know where to go to get capital. We don't understand how the applications work. We don't understand a lot of times black business owners don't understand the basics of just like, you know, how do you fill out a business plan? How do you do your risk analysis and all these things? Some of it is accessible online. A lot of it you can go maybe to a local uh, financial institution or bank and find out, but even just understanding the terminology and things like that. So it's like we have a lack of knowledge, um, sometimes a lack of access to the knowledge. And even if you have access to the knowledge, you have a lack of understanding of the terminology and things like that. And so, well, some people might be like, well, it's just a simple Google search or this or that. But you also got to think of the time that's associated with putting into these things. And a lot of times, Black people just don't have that level of spare time because nine times out of 10, we're working working harder than we really should have to be working just to survive. So when you're done working, you know, a very long shift or two jobs or whatever, and you come home, chances are you're not about to sit down and crack open Google and break down financial terms and funding capital and all that kind of stuff. Like you're not about to do that when you got to take care of your family or whatever the case may be, or even just get some sleep, you know, you got to get some sleep because you got to get up and work the next day. And so thankfully there are organizations like, um, Goldman Sachs and um, Verizon is just started like a business um, academy where you could get training for very, very cheap or free. I signed up for both. And then there are nonprofit organizations, um, which my friend Yasmin, that you guys see in the chat often, and some of y'all know, one of her friends um, has, I don't know if it's her nonprofit or if she just works for it or whatever, but either way, there are resources out there, but a lot of us don't even know where, where to begin. It's all overwhelming. So a lot of us are underperforming as Black entrepreneurs for lack of knowledge, lack of access to knowledge, or lack of understanding of the knowledge that's out there. And then we don't know where to go to get funding. And even if we do know where to go, we apply. I read in an article when I was researching, I forgot the exact site, but if I find it again, I'll link it down below, where banks literally and, and funding financial organizations literally um, just approve Black entrepreneurs less often. So even though it's supposed to be a fair chance, it really isn't. Like, you know, because nine times out of 10 on these applications are asking you what's your race, is that the third? And so if you answer, um, that study had actually shown that Black entrepreneurs actually get denied more often than non-Black entrepreneurs. So it's like you're burning the candle at both ends. Like, you know, damn if you do, damn if you don't. Like, you just, <laughs> it's like you can't win for losing. And so with these things up against us, you know, it's imperative that Black businesses benefit off of this holiday. It took long enough for it to even become an official federal holiday where people could get a paid day off of work and um, spend the day commemorating and whatnot. So let's make sure the dollars are going into the appropriate community that can really benefit off of it and needs to benefit off of it. You know, um, that should be your first priority. I will say that because if you're going to buy from non-Black businesses, not, I'm not going to say, oh, that's terrible and you shouldn't do this and that, da but your first priority for Juneteenth should be Black-owned businesses. I said what I said. Like, <laughs> you know, you don't like it. Oh, well, like it's it just, it is what it is. It is what it is. So support black owned businesses. Also black owned women businesses are the fastest growing group of businesses. Like black women are starting businesses faster than any other group of women. But unfortunately, cause this was in an article that I had seen, I want to say it was either by Brookings, Brook, the Brookings Institute, or it was, um, it was a banking site. It was one of the two that I was looking at, but I want to say it was the Brookings Institute they did a study and they saw that black women start businesses faster than any other group of women in the U or any other group of people in the U S but by year, like three, our longevity, our business ownership rates drop because we don't have long lasting businesses. We're starting them and then they're not able to keep their doors open because again, lack of knowledge, lack of access, lack of, you know, just understanding and assistance and things like that. And so this is why it's also important to have business mentors, you know, you can't build business alone. And so I offer business mentorship in some way, shape or form, more so in the form of consulting. But this is why I have even said for the rest of the year that I'm educating myself to the next level so that when I get the knowledge, now I can pass that on. So we have to have a sense of knowledge sharing amongst ourselves as business owners in the Black community, but we also have to have mentorship and people to help share knowledge because there are things that I didn't even know about, like that Goldman Sachs program. 
I didn't know about it until, you know, Yasmin told me about it. So it's just like, you don't really know of everything. And so people are going to know about things and have access to things that you don't know about and vice versa. So that was just something I want to say. Also, in a study that was done by Meta, the Metaverse, recently, this was done literally like, I want to say maybe a couple weeks ago, 51% of Black businesses have reported declining sales since, especially since everything with the pandemic. And so, you know, while a lot of Black businesses are thriving and as a collective, I forgot the exact number, but we generate um, somewhere in the billions every year, I think. It's something in the billions. But if we were operating at the level of other communities, we would be, and this was a study that was done by Brookings and the Metaverse as well, I think. We would be able to generate like another five trillion in sales. It was something crazy. I know it was trillions, but we would, we would be able to create and generate trillions more dollars in, in income and sales in the Black community. Imagine how that would place us as entrepreneurs, how that would place us as a community at large, because every business owner has a household. Every business owner lives in a community. Every business owner contributes to said community. And if your business is thriving, now you've got to hire people. If you've got to hire people, that's more job opportunities within your community. So people don't have to leave to go across town to get a job. They could work, you know, more local. That's, um, you know, that's more money in your pocket. That's more money per capita, per household, et cetera, et cetera. So it really goes a long way. Like every dollar spent in a black business really does make a difference because a lot of black businesses are being generated, but they're not, their doors are not staying open. And so this Juneteenth, this is pretty much the end of it. I just wanted to end on that note, but this Juneteenth and going forward, don't make supporting black business just a trend don't make it trendy like it needs to be a regular occurrence because when everything happened in 2020 with all the riots and you know the protests and this and that everybody was oh yeah we're going to support black business we're going to do this we're going to do that like black people need a seat at the table they need more opportunity they need to be seen they need to be heard we need to support and that lasted maybe a good two months if that, and we were right back to normal, people were tired of talking about, you know, equity and equality. People were tired of talking about opportunities for Black business owners. People were bit tired of talking about disenfranchisement and marginalization. Like people just wanted to get back to the good old hearty fun conversations about where are you going to the beach this year? And, you know, what's your favorite summer drink? Like, and I, I love a good summer drink. I love a good beach trip as much as the next person. I love a good lighthearted lifestyle piece of content as much as the next gal. But at the end of the day, these conversations need to be had because the longer you bury your head in the sand, the longer you it takes to get real transformation and real change. And so let's not make it a trend. You know, Juneteenth needs to be the catalyst to help you start paying attention to Black-owned business. And some people are uncomfortable even saying like, okay, well, I'm supporting Black-owned business. But the reality of the situation is that we are at a disadvantage. And so it's not on some like, oh, support us because we're better than everybody else and we have better products or whatever. But the point is that if we don't make it a vocal conversation, if we don't take the time to highlight this, a lot of Black businesses do not get the support because people aren't checking for them. They are not supporting them. They are going to the bigger corporations. And at the end of the day, just like you would say support small business and all that other stuff, it's the same for Black business. We need the same energy. So it's not a matter of superiority. It's a matter of leveling the playing field and creating equity and equality because the numbers don't lie. Like we can, we can sit here and you can bury your head in the sand if you want, but the numbers don't lie. It's very apparent. It's very obvious. So I know that isn't a message to make you shout, jump up and holler, but it is a message of sobriety and a message of reality and truth. And hopefully it's a wake up call that if you aren't supporting Black business, you can make it a point to sow into a Black business or organization that's fighting for change or whatever to really make a difference and to do your part. If you say that you want to see equality, you say you want to see equity, it takes more than lip service. It takes dollars because that's how the world is run. You know, until we stop using currency, then that's just, it is what it is. So you got to put your money where your mouth is. So nevertheless, I'm going to end on a brighter note and just say that I hope y'all, <laughs> I hope y'all um, have a good Juneteenth, which is this Sunday, which is also Father's Day. So I'm going to go ahead and say happy Father's Day to all the amazing fathers out there, father figures, just men in the community. 
um, at large in a society that just are present, that are there, that, you know, pour into these children and the next generation, like you are needed, your role is needed. And even though I'm a single mom, I do not wish myself a happy Father's Day. That's just never been my style. But hey, to each their own. If that's you, then do you, sis. But as for me, I personally only celebrate Mother's Day. So, you know, but happy Father's Day to all you guys out there. Um, your work is appreciated. And a very, very special happy Father's Day to my dad, Luther, and my brother, Ron G. You know, two amazing fathers in my immediate family. So I hope you guys have fun on Sunday. Like I said, find something to do. If you could throw together a cookout real quick, do a cookout or look for a festival or a reenactment or something. Go to African American Museum, find something to do. Have fun, celebrate the fathers in your family and your life. But that's basically all that I have for y'all. So on that note, this is like the shortest live I've had in a while. Usually my lives be an hour plus because I'll just be talking. But you know what? It's cool because I got to do some other stuff tonight. I'm going to take advantage of this time. So I hope that y'all have a good weekend. Be safe out there. Have fun. Commemorate the holiday. And let's just... Let's just have a good time. You know, have a blessed weekend. I will see you guys on two. Uh, you know what? I'm not going live on Tuesday. Tuesday, I'm not going live. I will. It will show up live as a premiere, but it's going to be a pre-recorded video. I'm going to be talking about YouTube monetization because, you know, your girls monetize on YouTube now. And I really just want to give y'all the real unfiltered, the raw, like, what is it really like? What you can expect? And if you have a YouTube channel, what you can expect? Or if you're thinking about starting one, like, should you start one in 2022? And if you do, what's the best kind of plan of action and stuff? So that's going to be a pre-recorded video. I'll see you guys live again next Thursday. Next Thursday. What am I even talking about next Thursday? Let's look at that real quick and see. Because I had to switch around some topics because I was supposed to have a collab next Thursday. But the woman that was supposed to collab with me had a family emergency. So y'all keep her in prayer. Actually, no, that was supposed to be today. That's why I'm doing this topic. Um, y'all keep her in prayer because she had a family emergency. So next Thursday is the topic that Layla actually suggested, the fine line between being real and being a jerk, you know, how to communicate with uh, respect. So join next Thursday for that. That's going to be interesting. We're going to look at some examples. I'll try to pull some examples and we'll call it a day. But other than that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Give this video a thumbs up, share it out. And I will see you guys next week. Have a good weekend. Bye.